Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. All right, we're in Acts chapter 5, verse 11. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 5, verse 11. I'm going to go ahead and pray for us, and we'll jump into the Word today. Father, thank you so much for your Word. Thank you, God, for this story in the book of Acts that really, really does uh, remind us that we need to be living in a condition of humility before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Bible says in verse 11, and great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. So you remember the story if you were with us yesterday, by the way, this is our seven part series on Be More. Um, Obviously, you know, the hope is that as we're in the word of God, we're growing in our relationship with the Lord. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, we have the tendency to focus uh, on our doing instead of our being. Um, and this is just an encouragement to really consider our character because that's what matters in the eyes of God. So you know the story. I mean, it's, it's a pretty heavy story. Ananias and Sapphira, they were, they were faking it, right? They were faking it uh, and they, didn't, they weren't able to make it as they faked it. Uh, they were called out, called on the carpet by the Holy Spirit. Um, and they were chastened by the Lord. There's a big argument over whether or not they were actually Christians or they weren't Christians. And, and was this the um, eternal punishment of God or was this the chastening hand of the Lord upon two of his children that were just pretenders, you know, and that were lying, um, not just to the people of God as they presented this um, false picture of um, spirituality, but they were lying to God himself. And so, I mean, that really is my, my point of view. I think that uh, they were disciples. I think that um, they had lied to the Holy Spirit. And I think that this was part of the chastening work of the Spirit of God in their life. And I also think that it was part of uh, the chastening work of God in the church, in the church. Because what you just read with me today is there was this great fear that fell upon all of the people of God. That's what the Bible says in verse 11. Great fear fell upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. And so so what happened was there was a massive wake-up call. You could imagine, like if on a Sunday morning we're all gathered together and there was a time of giving and someone stood up and said that they uh, had given this amount, you know, to help our benevolence fund. And, um, and then it was, you know, the Spirit of God revealed that person was lying and then all of a sudden they physically died and they were carried out like it would be you know what would happen. We all would be um, confessing our sins and trespasses before the Lord. Man, we would be owning it, whatever it was that we needed to own. And so today on our Be More series, um, I think that the word for us is uh, be humble. Be humble. You know, when we're faking it, when we're pretending, we lose sight of the one who sees all things, we become disconnected from the reality that like the Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, all things are naked and bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And this moment for the church in Jerusalem was a total wake up call. I mean, it was an awareness that God sees absolutely everything. And you know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that God chastens those whom he loves. And and part of the proof that we belong to God is that he doesn't allow us to continue in sin without without correcting us, right? And this is the argument of the author to that uh, epistle. This is what loving parents do. You know, if you really have parents who care for you and and are concerned about you and want to make sure that you're living in a way that's healthy for you and healthy for others, uh, you know they're going to they're going to make sure they're not just enabling bad behavior. They're going to be lovingly correcting you, and that's what the Lord does. The Lord chastens us. You know, I think the encouragement here is to allow that chastening work of God's Holy Spirit to work deeply within our lives. We can, especially if we're pretenders, especially if we're kind of faking the spirituality, you know, we become hardened in our heart and resistant to God, and and pretty soon that tenderness and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit who convicts us of our sins, you know, is just not present any longer because, because really we're going through the motions and there are all of these religious rituals that we're engaged in, but our heart is not present. 
and and sometimes it takes the shaking, right? The church in its infancy, God was like giving them a message, hey, it's not just about your religious ritualism, it's about where your heart is at with me. That's what matters. And there was an awareness in the church of how deeply that mattered to the heart of God, so much so that every believer, I believe as the scripture says, this is the case, uh, they were brought into that uh, reverence and respect and honor and fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. And so today, let's choose to be humble in our relationship with God. Let's come to him with open hearts and open hands. Let's uh, allow him, I mean, he has every right to do this, but you know, we can, we can dig our heels in. Let's allow him and his spirit to search our hearts and to just bring that cle cleansing and that healing and that renewal that maybe we need today. As you open your heart up to this, I just want to say to you, you will never regret it. Have a great day. Thank you for listening today. We are excited to ask our faithful listeners to pray for an event we are holding in Tijuana, Mexico on November 11th and 12th. The first day, we will have people from all over the city come, people who are impoverished, sick, and suffering, to provide free medical services of all kinds and prayer for supernatural healing. And the next day, as they gather in the soccer stadium, that as they hear the message of the gospel, their lives will be radically transformed. If you feel led to join us and be a part of this event with your financial support, $10 will sponsor one person to attend the entire free event. Our hope and prayer is to fill the stadium with 30,000 people. Please pray about how many people the Lord will have you sponsor. Your gift has the potential of transforming their lives into eternity. Please follow the links in the episode description to give and to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider.